Hello friends, James Stevenson back with part 23 in my Tesla earnings forecast video review series. Uh, I'm joined, as always, by my co-host, Loki. Let's make sure Loki stays in the frame here. Uh, you can see one little ear sticking up like a shark fin, uh, but if he moves around, uh, hopefully he will remain contained in the Loki cam here below me. Uh, so you can see what he's up to at all times. We'll pick up where we left off, which was row 1700. The next section is actually more of the same that I just reviewed. It's just summarizing the EPS uh, into fewer buckets. So it's taking some of these really small amounts uh, and throwing them together into stuff like taxes and other expense. Uh, and then the section below that is a stock compensation per share breakdown. Uh, so you can see where this total stock compensation is coming from. It's 12 cents in total. We saw that previously. Uh, 4 cents from research and development, 5 cents from cost of revenues, 3 cents from other SGNA compensation, and 0 cents currently from CEO stock compensation as Elon continues working for free. Um, so that's what this section is doing for you. Uh, yeah, so this is just more, uh, more summarized EPS. Uh, in the past couple of quarters, I've grouped a bunch of stuff together onto this SGNA row. I'm calling that on my EPS stack chart SGNA and other, including eight cents of deferred tax asset. Uh, so, uh, that's what's going on here. I left myself notes so I would remember that that's what I did if you're curious what these little corner carrots are about. Uh, so that's that section. Uh, the next section, in Q3 of 2022, Zach gave us more detail than we normally get during his remarks. And we don't get a lot of that. Uh, those who are forecasting Tesla at a very detailed level so you want to try to use these additional clues that uh, Zach is dropping uh, by running those breadcrumbs of information through to make sure your detailed assumptions are still in alignment with the additional detailed information Zach gave out. So I've uh, highlighted a few cells here where we knew some of this information, like the regulatory credits get reported every quarter, so we know that number has to be 286. Then for total automotive revenue, we knew what that number was. Uh, we didn't know what Austin and Berlin were independently because Tesla doesn't report at that level of detail. But Zach did say on the earnings call, removing regulatory credits and Austin and Berlin, our operating margin would have been our strongest yet, and auto gross margin would have been nearly 30%. And elsewhere in the same call, they said that Austin and Berlin were both contributing positive gross margin. So we knew these numbers had to be positive numbers, and we knew that this number, automotive gross margin excluding regulatory credits uh, and Austin and Berlin, would have to be nearly 30% because nearly 30% is what Zach said. So I've got that at 28.9% uh, with these numbers being positive. Just a little um, check section here to make sure that what I had at a detailed level was aligned with the unusual additional information we got from Tesla's CFO uh, during that earnings call. That's that section. What do I have next? Oh, uh, it's a big one. It's the foreign currency translation adjustment section. So uh, in the first section, all I do is bring in what I was forecasting as what I'll call the raw amounts for revenue, cost of sales, uh, by product type, uh, so total revenue is composed of all these things uh, and all these unadjusted costs. So let's bring those in so we have something to work with. And then in the next section, uh, these have been reported already, Q3 and Q4. 
uh, we know how much the current uh, foreign currency translation impact on gross margin was because Tesla reports it. Now, they don't give a very precise number, but they give a number uh, that I can tie out to. So I've punched in the numbers that I think are right for how bad uh, these impacts were for the yuan. Uh, so this 94% assumption is uh, driving how much the unfavorable impact was of a change in the value of the US dollar versus uh, the yuan. When the dollar strengthens, these uh, impacts are adverse uh, of translating foreign currencies into US dollars to report them on the consolidated income statement. Man, I, uh, I hope I keep my audience through this one because this is some pretty thick accounting uh, foreign currency translation impact. So uh, I've got assumptions here about how much of Tesla's global sales were denominated in yuan. So probably very few S and X because those have to be imported into China from Fremont, which is the only place they get produced. And uh, the import taxes are pretty high. So uh, there's a lot of less expensive vehicles available uh, to buyers in China, including the Model 3 and the Model Y, which are also Tesla's uh, and a lot cheaper uh, for their out of pocket cost because there's no tariff to buy cars that are produced locally, as the Model 3 and Model Y both are. Uh, so that accounts for the big disparity here and what I'm assuming for the percent of global sales denominated in yuan. Uh, then I've got a section here for uh, leasing. Even fewer people would lease <laughs> Model S and Model X is my assumption. You have to make assumptions if you're going to do a forecast. Um, it's, there are always assumptions in any analysis. If there were no assumptions, it would be called a report, uh, not an analysis. So you gotta make some assumptions if you wanna try and guess at what the total global impact would be. Uh, so I've got a global impact here of half a billion dollars worth of yuan uh, impact on revenue. And the next section is the cost of sales section. So if the revenue impact is unfavorable, the cost of sales impact is going to be favorable. It's going to net against the uh, revenue impact uh, because uh, if the translation is knocking down the yuan from the revenue, it's also knocking down the cost from the cost of sales, right? So the net impact at the gross margin line is always less than the total impact at the revenue line. So we've got all those assumptions here. Same idea for the cost of sales as for the revenue. Then euros also have to be translated into US dollars. Those are the only two uh, that I do because I think almost all of Tesla's global sales are denominated in either uh, yuan or euros. There is some in, you know, British pounds, uh, et cetera. But uh, or, or whatever other countries Tesla is selling that are not dollars or yuan or euro. This is most of it, and it's probably close enough for what I'm doing, given how far off my forecasts have been on my first two attempts. I got the direction wrong in Q4. Oh, man. Uh, th thinking that it would flip the other way and it would be favorable. I, I am expecting favorable uh, to happen in Q1, which is what this 108% is here. And then for quarters beyond that, I don't even bother guessing at whether it's going to be favorable or unfavorable. I just leave them all at 100%, which means no currency uh, translation impact for any quarter beyond uh, the next one. Too far out into the future to bother guessing at it. Uh, so these are my assumptions for how much of Tesla's global sales are denominated in euros. Uh, so you see those assumptions here. Probably more leasing than sales as a percent of total global leasing. Uh, pretty popular in Europe to lease vehicles. A lot of European corporations will give you an allowance to lease a new vehicle. Uh, so you've got that, and then you've got the cost of sales here. And that gives you those numbers, which give you the foreign currency translation impact. 
these numbers are uh, multiplying together uh, what you see in the sections above for the euros and for the yuan. Hey, how bad an impact is this uh, in total? Uh, we saw that it was going to be uh, half a billion for just the yuan on revenue. Uh, total impact on automotive sales revenue here, almost 1.2 billion. The leasing number is a lot smaller. Uh, so then Tesla Energy, there's a small impact. Services and other, there's a small number here. Uh, total impact on revenue was bad in Q3, even worse in Q4. I'm expecting it to be favorable uh, in Q1 of 2023 uh, by that much at the revenue line. And then for the cost of sales section, this is going to be a favorable impact here. So it's unfavorable. So it's going to net against whatever direction the revenue impact was, giving you a gross margin impact that's smaller. So the gross margin impact in Q3, you know, 0.1, Q4, 0.3. Uh, at the gross margin line, I'm only forecasting 0.14. This is a pretty small impact on a PL that's going to have $25 billion worth of revenue. Uh, but I do want to forecast something. So that's what I have. What else is in here? Anything else below this? Yes, uh, total Tesla revenue in millions by site and by product. So I've got that here. Uh, so that's fun info to have if you want to total this up and see, hey, uh, where does Tesla's total automotive revenue of 22 billion five hundred eighty eight million in my forecast for Q1 come from well it's coming from all of these areas so you've got it by model and you've got it by production location then for the non automotive area you can really see mega pack scaling up I mean almost all of the energy revenue growth is coming from this one line and mega pack getting way bigger uh, as uh, a result of that Lathrop facility being able to produce a lot of mega packs is what's in my forecast. Uh, and then services and other getting bigger over time, leading to total revenue here. Uh, and I've got uh, another section below it that's doing the same thing except for cost of sales dollars. And I'm using all this information to figure out the rate, volume, and mix impacts. Uh, for Tesla, which I will probably save for a separate video, uh, probably enough to just say, for the purposes of this video, I've got sections that give me info at this detailed level for revenue and for cost of sales. And that's the end of the detailed model tab, but it's not the end of my forecast video review series. I'm covering it in the same order here that you see the tweets in the thread, the 69 tweet thread. In future videos, I'm going to skip up to the top of this tab, the Detailed Model tab, and walk you through how we got to the income statement uh, at row 1169 where we started. So with that, I will close this video by checking back in with Loki, as I uh, like to do, and then saying, hey, if you like this video, click the like button or leave me a comment that says, I liked this video, James. Uh, or if you're not subscribed to my channel, if you're watching video number 23 in this series, you ought to be subscribed to my channel by now. Go ahead and do that. That's free, too. Uh, thank you to everyone who supports me on Patreon or by joining my YouTube channel, especially my executive producers, Kathy Kitchler and Halter Ferguson Financial, who joined at the top tier, earning them executive producer thank yous at the end of every video. And I'll see you in the next one.